Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and welcome back to another video where we are building patches from scratch on the lovely Arturia Mini Brute 2S. So today we're going to draw inspiration from sort of arcadey 8-bit sounds, uh, but with a special Mini Brute twist. And along the way, we're going to dig into one of the other sort of non-standard modes that we have on our sequencer mod tracks to get something that is sort of very archetypical of that sort of arcade sound. So before we get into the real meat of the patch, let's sort of establish our baseline. At the moment, we've got an initialized patch here with a sawtooth. We're going to get rid of that straight away because this is chip tuny type stuff, and we want that square wave immediately. Yes, and we're also going to turn up the pulse width modulation on that. Lovely, and I'm just going to give it a little bit of a softer attack and a bit more of a decay. Lovely. Okay, that's a starting point. Um, we'll probably come back and tweak that a little bit, uh, but I just wanted to sort of establish that because trying to do chiptune stuff with a sawtooth wave just doesn't feel right to me. So the effect that I really want to go for in this patch is that really, really classic um, arpeggiated kind of sound that you have on a lot of arcade and 8-bit uh, kind of sounds where you have that very, very rapid, often just sort of octave jumping arpeggio going on. And it's sort of going on the whole time when you're playing the notes. So it's not, kind of not, not like a, a standard arpeggio because it kind of moves and scales with the notes. Um, and we're going to make use of one of the alternate modes on the mod track to do that. So before we go any further, let's uh, sort of set up what my plan is. The control voltage on the Mini Brute 2S, uh, for pitch anyway, is based around volts per octave, right? So what that means essentially is that if we add a volt to uh, whatever is currently going into the pitch control for an oscillator, that's going to jump it up an octave. Add two volts, it's going to jump up two octaves. So wouldn't it be great if there was a way to sequence those kind of... Uh, voltage jumps or sequence control voltage. Well, as it so happens, the mod tracks have a bunch of settings for just straight up voltages, one, two, three, and eight volt um, voltages. I'm going to go to five. Um, now, if you want really fine control, then one is probably better because the steps are much, much smaller. As we go into these other modes, you'll see that that one's jumping by point. 0, 02 of a volt each time or something and this one is jumping sort of even more 5 gives us for this kind of patch the best range to precision I think um, through my experimentation anyway so my plan is that we're going to sequence some voltage jumps and then we're going to plug it into the FM of VCO1 and that is going to allow us to jump an octave. So if we add on one volt, it's going to jump one octave. If we add on two volts, it's going to jump two octaves. Right, so let's check out how that's going to work. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to go into the record mode for this uh, mod one track, which is now set to our, let me just double check, yes, five volt uh, sequencing. And I'm going to put down three steps. The first step I'm going to leave as zero volts. The next one I'm going to set to 1 volt, and the next one I'm going to set to 2 volts. And I'm going to set it uh, so that it's going to be last step, uh, which all that uh, last step on this last um, uh, step here, that's a redundant sentence. The last step is on this third step here, which means if you watch here, it's just going to cycle across those three there. Okay, so that is the sequence, in theory, of our octave jumps. So we can take a patch cable and we can go from the Mod 1 track and we're going to go into the FM input of VCO1. Now in theory, in theory, if we now turn this all the way up so that we're getting the full voltage passing through, when we play a note, as long as we are running our sequence, we should hear a wonderful pure octave jump. Which is not what that is. Now we can probably get a bit closer if we turn this one up a tiny bit. And if we turn this one up a bit more, sort of, but I don't like having to set these uh, into non-exact uh, jumps. So the reason that this is happening, as far as I can tell, is that the pot here, the resistor, essentially the variable resistor that sits behind this uh, knob here, 
is still taking off a bit of the voltage, it's still attenuating some of the voltage as we're going through. And that means we're not quite, ugh, it's, not, it's not very nice to listen to, we're not quite getting that pure octave jump. So what that means is that if we want to get this to work nicely, we need to boost the voltage by um, a little bit. Uh, another word for boost, of course, would be amplify. So we might find some help in our VCA, our voltage controlled amplifier. So we're gonna go from our mod track into the VCA, and we're gonna go from the VCA out into the FM. We're still getting things not working quite well. And that is because we need to make sure we are scaling this by the right amount. So what we want to do is apply some control voltage to our VCA, uh, which is going to allow us to sort of trim that voltage so that it's just right and that it is those perfect kind of octave jumps. Now, if we want to apply a knob to the control voltage, we have really one choice. The second attenuator, attenuator two, um, what this is normal to, what its input is, is a pure five volt DC level. So that means that when we turn this knob up, we're just increasing our voltage from uh, zero volts, more or less, up to five volts. So that basically allows us to have a knobby control over our VCA. So what we can do is take the output of that attenuator there, and plumb it into the CV here. Now, as soon as we start turning this, we're gonna be getting a drone. The reason for that is that this knob is also normaled to the amp. This is how you get drones happening uh, in the, the mini route is you just turn this knob up. Um, we don't want to be getting drones while that's happening. So we want to break that connection. Really easy to do. This um, here, if you can just see, might not be able to see on this camera, but it says at two. So this is the input where that's going to. That's our normal sort of connection. If we just plumb something in there, but not onto the other end, that will break that connection. So we'll no longer get that thing happening. Now we can use this knob, which is now controlling our VCA, which is taking the input from our, um, our mod track and it's going out into the FM, we'll keep the FM up to full, and now we can fine tune those voltages and just give them the tiny little boost that they need so that it really is one volt, two volt going in here. So let's just set that going again. That's better. Like it. Uh, I might drop down an octave even. I like it that much. Cool. I might give the decay a bit higher. And I think crucially to really get the sound that we're looking for for this kind of chip tuny thing, um, let's make this sequence go a lot faster. So first of all, we can set it to 32 notes instead, which is pretty close. We could even also uh, increase the tempo in general. That's pretty cool. We're gonna come back to the sequence, but let's just um, take a break and head into the rest of the synth a little bit so that we can kind of fine tune our sound a little bit. I wanna make the sound a little bit more retro uh, to begin with. It's a bit clean and bright at the moment. So I'm just gonna bring the filter down just a tiny bit. And then to compensate just at that top end, I'm gonna bring a little bit of resonance in. And then I'm just gonna turn up the brute factor. The brute factor in the first little bit of its turn is kind of like a time machine. It's like a, uh, let's make the sound a little bit less clean, a little less new. Rolls the top end off a little bit. And these old arcade circuits aren't perfect, so let's add a little bit of noise. would also be pretty cool. Let's bring in the second oscillator. Now the second oscillator is not being modulated by this track. The pitch of the second oscillator is controlled separately. So we end up, this is tuned an octave down at the moment, with this uh, awesome bass note. 
sat underneath. That's cool. Maybe a little bit darker. A little bit more pulse width modulation. <laughs> there we go. That's cool. Right. That's sidebar concluded. Let's go back to the sequence and have a little look at what we're doing. At the moment, we're doing these really rapid... Um, uh, no octave, one octave and two octave things. Now we can add in more steps. If we change our our last step here, uh, we'll go to maybe seven. We can put um, other jumps on here. So that could be back to, uh, well, how about we go sort of up and down instead. Um, that could be back to zero. That could be up to, hey, why not we jump all the way up to three octaves? And then this one can be back down to two. Maybe go faster. That's really, really cool. Maybe go down an octave again. Dirty. But we like dirty. Now, of course, the thing is, we don't actually just have to do octave uh, steps. We can tune these knobs to hit other interesting notes along the way. So, for example, so we can find another note. Uh, maybe a different note here as well. Go faster. Interesting things happen when we start to introduce swing as well, actually. Uh, I sort of crank it all the way and we kind of get... Sounds a bit broken, but in an interesting way. And of course we can set this uh, going different ways as well, so uh, we can make it go backwards and forwards instead. Ping-ponging, which just looks really fun. <laughs> Go back to going forwards, uh, forwards, and maybe try a different, try and find another different note in here. Uh, where was that one there? <laughs> So you can get really different feels by adding these different notes in. We can change the lengths of these. I think in a lot of ways, shorter ones or ones that repeat a lot work best. Um, oh, that's a bit, a bit ominous. And also, I know this isn't sort of vintage correct, but it sounds really cool with a little bit of spring reverb, so I'm just going to turn my Pilar on. Oh, I haven't actually got a, a thing on that note, have I? And that's step six. <laughs> and of course we can still actually um, sequence stuff the sequencer has to be running for this to work so you know we could uh, it might make sense to make this a slow sequence we could start sticking some notes down on here
So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that and I hope it maybe opened your eyes up to another possibility uh, for the sequencer, especially on the mod tracks on the Mini Route 2S. If you did enjoy the video, please do give it a thumbs up for the old like. And if you aren't already, then make sure you're subscribed to the channel because there'll be uh, some more Mini Brute videos coming up, as well as lots of synthesizer videos in general. Um, hopefully got some new bits and pieces coming to the channel fairly soon. Um, no spoilers, but um, I'm very excited to get my hands on some of them. Um, so there'll be, see, there'll be some new stuff to uh, take a look at as well. As always, thank you so much for joining me. I will see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.